Video games are made up of a multitude of elements, and they don't always coalesce into something complementary. Sometimes you get terrible stories that drag down game mechanics, and sometimes it's the other way around, which is exactly what we're talking about today. So, with that in mind, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 amazing stories trapped in mediocre video games. Number 10, Brutal Legend. The fact that more people don't know about Brutal Legend feels like an anomaly in the universe. I mean, pitch this game's story and set up to a friend, and I'll bet you dollars to donuts that they'll say that it sounds completely awesome. The reason it isn't better remembered is that, gameplay-wise, it just couldn't settle on what kind of game it wanted to be. Its controls scream action-adventure hack-and-slash, but its actual gameplay beats say strategy game. And while finding a balance between those two isn't impossible, Brutal Legend never threaded that needle, and so the gameplay comes off like a confused mess. Which is why no one remembers the game where Jack Black gets transported to a heavy metal dimension and has to fight demons with a giant battle axe that's also his guitar, because of course it is, alongside a badass goth warrior woman. But that's what happens, I guess, when you don't focus your core gameplay loop better. Number 9, Rule of Rose. One of the most fascinating games released on the PS2, Rule of Rose is a cult classic for a reason. Its story, which centers around a young woman named Jennifer as she seeks to unravel the mystery of her forgotten childhood, while also trying to survive against a cult of psychotic little girls known as the Red Crayon Aristocrats, is hailed by hardcore survival horror fans as one of the best in the genre. A shame, then, that the gameplay itself doesn't quite measure up to its contemporaries in that regard. Survival horror games had made backtracking a staple by the time Rule of Rose came out, but the extent to which this game falls back on it is just ludicrous. Add on to that shoddy controls and worse combat that makes said backtracking even more mundane, and then top it all off with a story that, while amazing, takes two or three playthroughs to fully appreciate, and it being forgotten, even by the most hardcore horror game fans, becomes a little less shocking. Number 8, Telltale's Batman. Telltale has always been known for one particular set of mechanics, basically since their inception. As a result, the gameplay in their titles is serviceable, but it's not really why people are there. What they're there for is the story, and when a Telltale game story works, well, it really works. Hence, Telltale's Batman series. These Batman games revolve around the titular hero solving a mystery surrounding the background of his parents. A background which, as it turns out, is tangled up in some stuff that he would rather not think about his venerated parents being involved in, and if that sounds familiar to the Dark Knight's recent big screen outing, well that's because it is. As Bruce Wayne descends deeper and deeper into this mystery, it'll be up to the player to decide how much of his life he burns to the ground in the pursuit of truth. Telltale's Batman gives a welcome spin on the tried and true Batman story formula. It's just a shame that the game itself doesn't give any new spins on the Telltale formula. Number 7, Sonic and the Black Knight. How hilariously fitting that the first genuinely fantastic Sonic the Hedgehog story comes in by far one of its most mediocre titles. Despite the sword combat not being implemented nearly as well as it could have been, Sonic and the Black Knight still managed to tell a compelling story that makes you wish that Sega had gotten the gameplay right so the game could have been successful enough to continue the short-lived storybook series that this takes place in. The story here takes place in Camelot, where King Arthur has completely lost his mind. In retaliation to her kings of madness, Young mage Melina summons a hero from another world to aid her in taking down the tyrant, and no guesses for guessing who she summons. Now you wouldn't think a story where Sonic the Hedgehog fights King Arthur would have not only one of the best twist villains in gaming history, but also contain themes of nihilism and existential dread at the inevitability of death, but hey, there we go, stranger things have happened. And all of this makes it a shame that the gameplay just isn't that polished, because this thing could have been remembered way more fondly. Number 6, The Order 1886. The more time we get away from it, the more a shame it is that The Order 1886 never got a follow-up. You can admittedly see why though, the backlash to this game was immediate, with fans and critics alike lambasting the title short length and bog standard third person shooting, the gameplay itself is fine, totally serviceable I guess, but compared to its stunning graphics it was decidedly very last gen. 
The world of The Order 1886, though, was hugely compelling. Spinning a tale about supernatural hunters in late 1800s London, the grimy environment mixed with an overarching shadowy conspiracy about werewolves and vampires was every horror fan's dream. Even better, the game ended with an excellent cliffhanger that threatened to make the universe even larger, but fans never got to see what that might have become. With the right developers, The Order 1886 could have been a franchise right up there with Sony's other exclusive big hitters, but instead this intriguing story has all but been lost to time. Number 5. Guardians of the Galaxy Guardians of the Galaxy received rave reviews from fans upon its release. And while a decent game on its own, a lot of the praise admittedly stemmed from it not being the conga line of terrible ideas and live service nonsense that was the ever disappointing Avengers game. But even after the hype died down, the story presented in Guardians shined through its so-so gameplay. And the gameplay is fine like so many of the titles on this list, but it doesn't do anything to stand out from other single player adventure games from the past half decade. It does everything they do and it does it kind of worse, like seriously, the gameplay in this thing is easily the worst part of the whole experience. Meanwhile, the story and how it presents the titular heroes is what really draws people in. Fans of the movies, for instance, were satisfied by how well they translated James Gunn's style of dialogue and character interaction, while fans of the comics were treated to more comic accurate designs that were changed from page to movie screen. The relationship between the Guardians is genuinely interesting, and their struggles and issues are a delight to follow through this surprisingly twisty plot. Number 4. Assassin's Creed Revelations The Assassin's Creed games spent a lot of time on Ezio and the world surrounding Assassin's Creed 2, but they finally wrapped the whole thing up in order to move on with the franchise with the underappreciated revelations. Unlike the previous games, this is the first Assassin's Creed to centre on more than one assassin at once. In this case, protagonists Altair and Ezio, both of whom are, at this point, very old men. The game focuses on the twilight years of both of them as they unravel a conspiracy that stretches not only through their own respective time periods, but well into the present day. While the gameplay is the same sort of thing that Assassin's Creed had been doing up until that point, with a few little added bits and bobs in there like a tower defense game that I'm sure someone out there was probably maybe asking for, it's the story that's really the biggest selling point of the entire thing, as it ties up loose plot threads that the previous games had left hanging. Number 3. Ultima 6. Ultima, the grandfather of all CRPGs, is known amongst old school gamers both for its engaging classic RPG gameplay, as well as its capacity for telling great stories when EA wasn't royally screwing the developers over. Ironically, however, one of the series' best entries comes in its most disappointing game, from a gameplay perspective at least, that being Ultima 6, The False Prophet. While not bad by any means, the game's UI is frustratingly clunky, making even simple acts such as opening a box and taking out a single item far more complicated than it needed to be. The story of Ultima 6 is its true selling point, being a narrative all about the unintended consequences of seemingly noble acts. The Avatar, your character, spent all of Ultima 4 and 5 trying to do the right thing and be a good person. But one act in four, that being stealing a book known as the Tome of Infinite Wisdom, ends up causing a holy war between the nation of Britannia and the book's rightful owners, the Gargoyles. A war that is, on no uncertain terms, your fault. It's a unique premise, and navigating this messy situation brought some of the most fascinating writing the series had ever seen. Number 2. Bioshock 2 when Bioshock first hit shelves, it more or less changed the entire game. Its direct sequel, Bioshock 2 on the other hand, was either panned or just straight up overlooked by the very fanbase that demanded its existence in the first place. And that's a real shame, because while it doesn't really change anything fundamental about the gameplay, the story of Bioshock 2 is pretty close in quality to that of the original. Hell, it's probably better than Infinite Story, now that I think about it. Bioshock's two story centers around a big daddy named Delta rather than some poor, dumb, squishy human, as this big daddy navigates the still operational rapture to rescue his charge from the enigmatic Sophia Lamp. While the original Bioshock focused on the flaws of a society built on Randian objectivism, this one does the same thing with a rapture that is now run on the philosophy of collectivism. 
It's an interesting twist to the thematic current of the original game, and it gives Bioshock 2 a much needed reason to exist. And it makes Bioshock 2 more than just a sequel that rehashes the original's ideas. Also, it's DLC, Minerva's Den is absolutely sick, and that story is like one of the best Bioshock things you can ever get your hands on, so definitely play that as well. Number one, Spec Ops The Line. Whenever someone talks about Spec Ops The Line, which, let's face it, is all we do here on WhatCulture.com, the primary topic of the conversation will always be the story, because there really isn't anything to the gameplay to make it worth talking about. Whereas the gameplay is some of the most generic, bare minimum, cover-based third-person team shooting of its time, you know, competently built but with nothing new at all to it, the story is one of the greatest in the history of the medium. Here, the city of Dubai has been hit with a freak sandstorm, and the populace has been left struggling for survival, with a team of soldiers being sent in to retrieve an American commander who got caught up in it all. The team is led by one Captain Martin Walker, who, as the mission becomes more and more perilous and he is forced to cross more and more moral lines as a result, slowly loses his grip on reality. Spec Ops The Line, as a result, is one of the darkest, bleakest looks at what was the dominant genre of the gaming industry at the time. Which only makes how rough the gameplay is just another thematic element to the story. I mean, this game does not want you to have fun at all, and fortunately, its mechanics means you probably won't. Spec Ops The Line isn't just a great story trapped in a mediocre game, the mediocre game is kind of the point of the story. You're supposed to be numb and dulled by what you're doing, because that's what the character's doing in the story. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. What did you think about these games? And are there any other great stories trapped in so-so games that I missed off here? While you're down there as well, could you please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to What Culture Gaming for more lists and news like this on the regular. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.